The disciples of Jesus Christ claim to have witnessed the biggest event in the history of mankind. They saw a risen Jesus who three days earlier died by crucifixion and had been buried in a tomb. The disciples' testimony leads to the disciples' trilemma. They were deceivers, they were mistaken, or they were truthful. Who were these disciples? What did they claim to have witnessed? What about the objections from the critics of Christianity? And what do all of these questions mean for you? How can you share this information in your personal evangelism? Uh, wait a minute. You are personally telling people they need to be saved, right? These questions and more will be answered in this video series. The disciples were telling the truth, and this video series will be a defense of the truthfulness of their testimony. What's going on? I'm Johnny Mack, and this is Impact Evangelism, the YouTube channel that's all about evangelism. So if you're into evangelism, this is the channel for you. And this is the Disciples' Trilemma, Part 19. The Apostle John, from a son of thunder to the Apostle of Love. The Apostle John wrote five books of the New Testament. And within those five books, he wrote the word love, or the form of the word love, over 100 times. That's in the King James Version. And so, the Apostle John was the Apostle of Love. But, he wasn't always known as the Apostle of Love. Let's take a look at his story. Jesus calls John and his brother James, Sons of Thunder. Boanerges, which simply means rage. And the scriptures don't tell us right off the bat why Jesus called him a son of thunder. We learn that later on. But at the end of John's life, he was willing to die for the fact that he saw the risen Christ. So how did John go from a son of thunder to the apostle of love who was willing to die for the fact that he saw Jesus risen from the dead. Let's dig a little deeper. John was a fisherman from the town of Bethsaida in Galilee. And in this fishing business, he was in business with his father Zebedee and his brother James. Now, they didn't have your typical mom and pop fish, <laughs> fishing service because their uh, establishment, their company, whatever you want to call it, had hired servants as well. So they were probably middle class, probably middle of the road uh, as far as their status and their wealth and money and things like that in, in Galilee. And it's also uh, interesting that the high priest knew the Apostle John. And maybe the connection was because he had a well-known fish, uh, fishing uh, business up in Galilee. And maybe he had a little money. Maybe he gave a little money to the temple. Who knows? But it's interesting to see that, that the, his fishing business that he worked with with his father was well off enough to, hi, to hire employees to get the job done. And he was well known to the high priest as well. John's family was well off enough to help support Jesus and his ministry. Let's take a look in the book of Matthew and see what it says. In Matthew 27, verse 55 through 56, is the scene of the crucifixion of Jesus. Verse 55 says this, Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. So we see that John's mother was a supporter of Jesus and his ministry. Now we're going to take a look in the book of Mark and find out what John's mother's name was. This comes from Mark chapter 15, verses 40 through 4. We'll just read this verse. And you can see side by side, we'll look at 
Mark 15 side by side with Matthew 27. And we can see what his mother's name was. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and Joseph, and Salome. So we find out that John's mother's name was Salome. Now let's take a look in the Gospel of John and let's put what, God, what John says in his Gospel in the same scene and match it up with what we just read. John chapter 19 verse 25 says this, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. So many people take this to mean that Mary's sister was also there with them at the cross. And since Salome is not mentioned in this verse, they think that possibly that Salome was Mary's sister. And this would make Jesus cousins with James and John. Now I'm not sure if I buy this theory, but a lot of scholars and, and Bible students do believe that they were cousins, that, that Jesus was cousins with John and James. And as all, it's also interesting to note that John was in the inner circle of Jesus along with James and Peter. And quite possibly, uh, John and James were a part of his inner circle because they were cousins. Now, like I said, I, you know, I'm not sold on that theory, but a lot of people believe it. But it does kind of make sense that the reason why they were part of his inner circle was maybe because they were relatives. John also had a horrible temper, a bad temper. Let's take a look at the Bible and see what it says about John's temper. Luke chapter 9 verse 54 says this, And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? So we see in this scene that John and James were mad because they, the Samaritans disrespected Jesus. And so John wanted to be like, you know, Elijah the prophet. Let's just call down fire from heaven and just obliterate them on the spot, right? But Jesus let them know that, hey, this is not what my ministry is all about. So we see that John had a bad temper. So we see where this son of thunder name came from. The Bible also teaches us that John wanted to be a big shot. <laughs> At one point in his life, he wanted to be well known. And we see when we, there's a story from Matthew and Mark. If you combine these two stories, we see where John and his brother James uh, got his mother to go to Jesus. You can put these uh, stories together and come away with this uh, story that they complement each other, that James and John got their mother to go ask Jesus a question and ask him, hey, can we sit at your right hand and your left hand in the kingdom of heaven? Now, they got their mother, Salome, to go to Jesus and ask him this question. And let's just see what the Bible says about that. I'm going to read the account from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 20 through 21. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto them, Grant these that these my two sons would sit at your right hand and your left hand in the kingdom of heaven. Now there we see John wanting to be a big shot, getting his mother, <laughs> Salome, to go to Jesus and ask him this question. So the Apostle John, during Jesus' ministry, was a hot-headed guy who wanted to be a big shot. And how did John change from that to the apostle of love? Well, we can look in John chapter 20. And in John chapter 20, something amazing happens. Mary Magdalene notices that Jesus' tomb was empty. Jesus had just been crucified by Pontius Pilate. And Joseph of Arimathea, and Nicodemus took him and buried him in Joseph's tomb. And the women that were following knew where he was buried. And Mary Magdalene noticed that he, he was not there. 
And she runs to tell the other apostles that, you know, Jesus had been risen from the dead. His tomb was empty. And so Peter and John run to the tomb. And Peter looks in first, and then and, and then John kind of pushes him out of the way and looks. John gets there, you know, ahead of Peter. And he looks in, and he sees a napkin, a facial cloth, a burial cloth, folded neatly and laid to the side. And the Bible says in John 20, verse 8, that this scene turned John into a believer, that he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. And after this incident at the tomb, where John noticed that Jesus' tomb was empty, and he believed that he had risen from the dead, Jesus appeared to John five different times. In his glorified body, he appeared to John after his resurrection five times. So when he witnessed Jesus risen from the dead, saw him five times, this changed John's life, changed his attitude, and he started turning into the apostle of love. And we see in the book of Acts that he ministers with Peter. And in chapter 4, the Jewish authorities basically warned Peter and John not to preach Jesus and his resurrection uh, with the threat of persecution and possibly death. And in fact, uh, James, his brother, was put to death as a martyr. In you can read that in the book of Acts. But John was threatened with force, with violence against his being, possibly death. And that he was warned not to preach the resurrection. But guess what? John continued to teach the resurrection. And in verse 5, I mean chapter 5, we see in the book of Acts that he was arrested along with the other apostles. And after his miraculous jailbreak, you can go back and read that story. It's a great story. But John continued to preach the risen Christ, even under the threat of death. So we have John who went from a from a hot-headed uh braggadocious, wannabe big shot to seeing Christ risen from the dead and his heart being changed. And he became so courageous that he was willing to die for the fact that he saw Jesus risen from the dead. And he went his whole life that same way, preaching the risen Christ under the threat of execution, under the threat of banishment, under the threat of all kinds of things. In fact, he was actually banished in his later years to the Isle of Patmos. And John never stopped preaching the resurrection because he saw Jesus risen from the dead. It changed his life. And the Apostle John was willing to die for the fact that he saw Jesus risen from the dead. The Apostle Paul calls John a pillar of the church in Galatians. And John goes on to write five New Testament books all about love. If you read his five books, the word love again, or a form of the word love, appears over 100 times. So we see how Jesus and his resurrection changed John. He went full circle from a braggadocious, hot-headed dude, <laughs> right, who wanted to be a big shot in the kingdom of heaven, he went from that to the humble apostle of love who was willing to die for the fact that he saw Jesus risen from the dead. And I hope you can use this information in your personal evangelism. That's what the disciples' trilemma is all about, is I give you evidential apologetics that you can use when sharing the gospel with someone. So you can tell someone that the Apostle John was willing to die for the fact that he saw Jesus risen from the dead. We have the greatest message in the world that the Son of God came to earth and died on a cross for the sins of mankind. But three days later, after he was buried in a tomb, he conquered death, he conquered the grave, He conquered sin, he conquered Satan, and rose from the dead to give eternal life to anyone who puts their trust and faith in him.
That's the message we have to give to the world. So what are you waiting for? If you want to make an impact on this world, what are you waiting for? Go out today and share the gospel. And I'll see you next time on The Disciples Trilemma.